It's been a while since I've made a Shea Poco video. Uh, today's video is about how I made a key for my Volkswagen Touareg. It had been a few months since I'd driven it and the battery died, so the key fob wouldn't work. And the only way to get in the car is by using this emergency key, which is made of plastic. And as soon as I put it in the door lock and turned it, it basically tore off. Uh, so I wanted to get a metal key made. And unfortunately the dealer can only sell me a plastic one. And I went to a locksmith um, and they can duplicate a key, but it has to be a metal key because their machine has like a little conductive probe that traces out the pattern. Uh, so the only way to do it is for me is to make it on my CNC machine. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So I took a picture of my kind of bent and broken plastic key and I set it on some graph paper that has a 0.2 inch uh, grid spacing. And here I'm just gonna straighten the image and I'm gonna use this image as the background of my CNC software. Uh, so here I'm going to kind of create an origin. Uh, so when I import the image in CNC software, the origin will be right on one of those grid lines and that'll help me set the scale for the image. And I'm just going to brighten and increase the contrast just so that the lines are a little bit more defined. So this is the CNC software that I'm using called Carbide Create. And I'm just setting the background image to the image of the key on the grid. And I'm just changing the scale until the grid lines match the grid lines that I set up in the CNC software. And you can see I'm getting pretty close. That looks like it's pretty spot on right there. Now I'm just going to draw a polygon to match where the key cut needs to be. And I'll just skip to the final layout that I have. I used the higher contrast image so that I had a clear defined line. And I have the outline of the new key and the key cut pattern of the old key in one file. Uh, so I'm basically making a fixture to hold the new key while I cut the pattern from the old key. And since they're in one project, they'll be exactly aligned. This is the holder. Let's see how it fits. I'm going to tap those two holes to really lock the key down so it doesn't move. Normally I'd hit it with a wire brush, but it already feels super smooth. Doesn't feel like there's any burrs on there at all. So when your battery dies, you take this cover off, you have to pull the door handle out a little bit. So now I have a metal version. And it takes quite a bit of effort to turn. Now that I've exercised it, it's getting a little bit easier, but plastic key broke off the first time I used it, so now I have a metal spare. I had an extra flip key blank as well, so I decided to cannibalize that to make a smaller keychain for my small set of keys. I was hoping I could replace the plastic key in the fob with the metal version, but this one's a little too wide to fit inside, so I just made it an external keychain. Just like the plastic version, you're really going to need a wrench to be able to use this key. But it's really just for emergency use. In the future, if I have a dead battery, I have a, an extra 90 amp plug here. I can plug this into my battery charger, which charges our travel trailer, or I can run an inverter. This is a 90 amp plug. And I leave it plugged in to a line under the hood, just in case I do get a dead battery, I can always fish that wire out and hook up a battery charger. 90 amp plugs are super useful, so I added one in the trunk as well. So even after I charged the Touareg's dead battery, my key fob still wouldn't work. It wasn't until I put the key in the ignition that 
the keys kind of resynced. So before you have a dead battery, it's worth checking to see if your spare key works. And if not, I would highly recommend getting a metal one. And I realize the subset of people that have a Shapoko CNC and a Torig are pretty small, but hopefully you found this video informative anyway, and thanks for watching.